That time where it really pays off to ask your friends and family, hey, do you have any Nintendo boxes lying around? Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting. These boxes are actually from my wife's childhood. She was fortunate enough that she kept them the entire time and I didn't really know about it. So I have her here with me, I'm going to talk about, we're going to talk about her entire history with handheld gaming, how she got started with handheld gaming and Nintendo gaming, and the story of these boxes that are honestly in really good condition, which is really makes me happy, obviously, as a collector. And also, I think I'm kind of shocked that I've been collecting for 12 to 15 years, and I've only got these boxes a few days ago with you guys. That is insane to me. So, Ivory, please tell us the story. How did your mom finally find these boxes? I, I know that we looked for it earlier on and did, couldn't find them, and then I just brought it up the other day. She had some extra time on her hands now, and so she she found them and dug them up, and it was so exciting. And she sent a picture, and I was like, that's them. Now, do you think she found these in the basement? No, she found them in the den. That's probably why. Mm -hmm. Because at your place, a lot of basements where we live... They're normally for storage. Mine's for a Nintendo room, which is crazy. I just think it's so cool that you were actually so similar to me that you guys, like, kept the boxes, kept them in really good condition yeah. all these years. And I remember asking about these when you guys were nice enough to basically give me the boxes for, like, some of the Pokemon games and things like that. And I remember asking, like, do you have the boxes for the systems? And we just couldn't find them. Could not find them. Yeah, I remember us being, like... Uh, I'm sure they're somewhere, somewhere, we can't imagine us having thrown them out, but we finally found them. I think, like, so I was obviously really excited, like, when she just mentioned that, it was almost out of the blue, because I, I always thought, like, they have to be somewhere, which is so cool. Alright, so now I'd love to just tell the story, or at least hear the story, about how you got into Nintendo. Because the way I got into Nintendo is similar to most people. Like, their friends had a system, but I grew up on the Sega Genesis. I really wanted to play Nintendo games, so I bought Nintendo 64, and then I never really looked back with Nintendo. So I was on the home console train, the home console circuit the whole time, but you guys were handheld. First of all, was there a reason why you guys went handheld? Well, we were driving down to Florida to play, like, to go there for holidays and stuff, and so... You wanted something handheld to like keep the kids entertained, was I think my interpretation. Um, and so yeah, for one Christmas, my parents gave my brother and I the the lime green Game Boy Color that you see over there. Uh, and with it, we got Pokemon Red. And Hold on a second, let me just grab that. And we also Look got this box. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. So first of all, so you got two games. One system between the two of you to share. Yeah. But you got two games, basically one for each of you, but the idea was that you're going to share both of them. Yes. So first of all, the Pokemon game, let's talk about this. So your parents bought one Pokemon game for the two of you, yeah. because how are they supposed to know how this works back yeah. then and they everything? They didn't realize that you could only save one game on the Pokemon, so they uh, didn't realize that at the time, and so that's why there was only Pokemon Red purchased. Pretty brilliant and also kind of mean of Nintendo. Sneaky. Very sneaky <laughs> to be like, you can only have one save file. Because even games on the Super Nintendo, even games on the NES had multiple save files. But this was like, it was also a very personal experience, I felt like, to everyone. Having their own Pokemon game, their own Pokemon cartridge, like, that was mine. And a lot of people need to replace the batteries at this point, the Pokemon games. Yes. But yours still does have your original save file on it, which is so cool. Yeah, it's and even cool. says Ivory on it. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. With your gamer tag. So your parents bought one of these. Yeah. And then eventually down the line, let's just stick with Pokemon for a moment. They realized your brother can't play because you started a file. Yeah. So and let's so just we were this away on, for seconds. on like the cards at the time as well. And so they wanted him to be able to experience that. Um, so for his birthday, they got him Pokemon Yellow. And so now he was able to play his own Pokemon game as well. And I was so pleased when I saw the condition of these boxes. You guys had a box for these. Yeah. Like a wooden box that they kept them in that everything kind of perfectly fit inside. Yeah. Keeping were, them in really good condition. And like they didn't get dusty in that box or anything. Yeah, they 
they stayed in really good condition. Now, since then, I put the protective cases on these because you guys probably know, and you might have seen my video, I'll put it as a card in the top right-hand corner, of how expensive and crazy Pokemon collecting and Pokemon games have gotten recently. So I was really pleased that these are in such good condition. I know your brother one day might want some of these back or something like that. I don't really know. I don't know. I don't really know. <laughs> so now, at some point then, each of you had your own Pokemon game, but you guys didn't have blue at any point because yellow was the new game that year probably yeah. and you get Pikachu following you the entire time yeah, so that's so kind of cool. It was definitely an upgrade and and so the the issue became that we both wanted to play Pokemon at the same time and we the wanted to play on our Game Boys at the same time and of course when you're driving in the car only one of you can play on that lime green Game Boy Color. Speaking of which, this Game Boy, by the way, is so old that it didn't have a backlit screen. Right. So I remember it's you telling awful. me stories of, like, <laughs> leaning and, like, passing, like, I'm sure a lot of people remember this, but, like, driving on the street at night and then the passing lamps and just seeing, like, every once in a while. Yeah. Well, and we got those, like, things that are for your books, like the lamp... The worm well, lights. The worm lights. Yeah. We had those so that we could try and see, too. And, like... The, the screen, you have to fit, get it to like the perfect angle to be able to see in the dark. I mean, I feel like a lot of people that were probably born after the year 2000 have no idea. Like, they, <laughs> you, can't the even, struggles. you can't even conceptualize, like, oh, like a screen that doesn't have a backlight? Like, what's the... Yeah. How is that even a thing? Like, how did you even get by? Because the Game Gear, I grew up on the Game Gear. That was my handheld system. And that did have a backlight, but the system was monstrous. It's sideways and it was almost twice the size of this. So now you have one system, but two Pokemon games. Yeah, so for the next event, my parents, I'm assuming for Christmas, I don't remember exactly, got my brother the Game Boy Advance that you see there in the middle. Now, so I'm this one's sure called, isn't this called, um, I mean, it's a white system, but I'm wondering if it's called like Glacier or something like that. I'm not sure if this one had a name. I'm Let me sure. just see on the I side here. It... Arctic, there we oh, go, okay. right there. It's called Arctic. Yeah. I think the Glacier one's the blue one. The system itself, I do not have. Your brother still has that system. Yeah. So we don't have the system to show off. I do have the Glacier system here because basically this is a Game Boy Advance. Still no backlight. It's still no backlight. So you're saying your brother got this one then for Christmas? Yes. So he finally had so his own had system. He had his own system. I had my own system. Life was so good. So it was like we this. We could drive. We could play Pokemon. It was great. So you had... These two colors look like Christmas to me almost yeah. a little bit. So you had Kiwi, the system, by the way. That's the name of that. Oh. And you had the red version with Charizard on the cover, and your brother had the Arctic system with Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. And trades. You guys mentioned that you didn't trade very much between we, like we siblings. We did not have a cable. Uh, my friend down the street had a cable, and so I would trade with her, and that's how I worked to complete my Pokedex. But because she also had uh, Pokemon Blue, where I had Pokemon Red. Um, but yeah, like my brother and I, we never did any trades. So in these games, by the way, if you wanted to trade Pokemon back then, you had to connect cables to your system and connect your cable, like connect the systems physically to one another. Now it's just, you just trade online basically, and it can just happen over the internet. Again, kids, you don't know the struggle. If you needed a link cable. Well, and so there was like the cheat, I'm sure everyone our age remembers, is when it would, when like a Pokemon was trading, you'd trade something crappy and you'd trade something really good. And I remember we were trading, my friend and I, we were trading a Porygon. She had gotten the Porygon and earned up all of like the money and like coins to be able to get a Porygon. And so we transferred it over. And if you turn it off at the right time, you both end up with that Porygon. <laughs> yeah, so I do remember that as well. So like, if you turn off the system at the perfect time, oh my gosh, it boots up. That's so weird. It needs the game inside. But yeah, you turn off your system at the exact right moment. Mm -hmm. But if you messed it up, then you lost that Pokemon completely. <laughs> yeah, that was a terrifying thing. Terrifying. So, like, did you guys... To make like, sure that you were like, okay, I have to turn it off or you have to turn it off. It was a lot of coordination and practice, for sure. And like, we definitely lost some Pokemon. You probably practiced with some other yeah. Pokemon first. You probably didn't start yeah. with the Porygon. Yeah. That's so cool. So now you each have your own Pokemon game. That's not all that you probably... What did you get next, actually, in your family? So what was... What was next? So the next thing we got was Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver. Before that, though... Oh, we also... Yeah, for Christmas, so we had gotten the Pokemon Red, and we got the Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. So the very first purchases you guys got, we just got on the Pokemon train for a while. Mm -hmm. These are the first two games you guys got. What's really interesting to me that I didn't know this, but 
like, I keep trying to speedrun Mario 1 and learned a little bit, and then you were playing it, and you're like, oh, I kind of know these levels and everything, and I was yeah. like, why? You didn't grow up on a, with an NES, and she mentioned, like, oh, I had it as a handheld. Yeah. So this version, it's you want to tell me about this one a little bit? I... Honestly, I just like when I watch you try and speedrun, I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. And and definitely like this one was definitely something that my brother and I would play together and try and try and beat and we'd like share the levels and everything. So yeah. I just think it's really cool that you guys have the original boxes for everything. And this game, by the way, it has the original 32 levels from the NES version of the game. But it also really interestingly to me, it has eight competition courses that you can do in an all new versus mode, all new way back when this game released in 1999. Yeah. What? <laughs> so it was like a 14 year anniversary, I guess, that they re-released yes. the original game from 85. I want to play you in some of those levels because this one right here, like I don't recognize this stuff at all. It's cool that you have the original game on the system and I'm wondering if it's cropped differently. Boy I honestly color. can't remember. So that's that's yeah, ridiculously that cool, because you're actually yeah. really good at this one, too. All right, then after that... After that, we got Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Silver. So when did you get Gold and Silver for Pokemon? I'm not 100% sure. Again, it was either Christmas or our birthdays are within the same week. So it was either for Christmas or our birthday. And so my brother got Pokemon Gold and I got Pokemon Silver. So that was a pretty cool thing, and we just advanced it on, and we were definitely big Pokemon fans at the time. Advanced? This is still Game Boy Color. It's not Game Boy Advance. I, uh, <laughs> Good <no>. pun! <laughs> Great pun! So here you have gold and silver, by the way. The best one of these is probably crystal. The price for crystal is absolutely insane. I do have that complete in box, but that's not one of the ones that you guys had growing up. That's one that I collected maybe five or six years ago, I think, to complete my own personal set. So then you each had your own system, and then you each had these games as well. Now, whenever I hear you speak of these games, I feel like you have a very high regard for these games compared to the originals, because you said, a little bit of spoilers, but the games are like 20 years old. But after you beat these games, it's so cool that you go back to the original region. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. Um, and I, I love, this is where they first introduced the new Eeveelutions as well, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of the Eeveelutions. You mean Umbreon and Espeon? And so, trying to get Umbreon and Espeon, and like, that was such a challenge and so exciting, and trying to like get trading at night and during the day and build, building up friendship, it was just a, a really great advancement of the game. That's so neat. Do you remember which one was yours? Uh, silver. Silver was yours, so this one was yours. Yeah. And the other, the gold was your brother's. Yeah. That's so neat. I think it's kind of crazy that they have the same Pokemon on the top. I would have liked a different Pokemon on the top. The sides, too, it's got the same. Do you remember those guys' names? No. I think uh, it's Slowking Slow and Elekid. Maybe. Yeah. Who is a baby Pokemon to Electabuzz. Yeah. That's right. Do you remember the owl? Hoot Hoot. Hoot Hoots. That's such a funny name. We got Pikachu on the back there as well. So these games, still, you need the link cable to trade. Yeah. Still need the link cable to trade, but now you have two systems. You have one for each of you, which is quite nice. All right, and then at some time late, what was the next purchase you guys had yeah, after next, that? At some point in the next little while, again, because, of course, I wanted to start playing advanced games, and, like, Game Boy Color games were getting harder and harder to find. They weren't re re releasing them as much anymore. And so I got the Game Boy Advance SP that you see right there. So this one was yours. Yeah. And that one there is your brother's. Correct. So because you got it later on, you got the new updated version that has a built-in lighted screen. Thank God. I think that sounds so funny. Built-in lighted screen. Built-in lit screen? Either way. I don't know. But huge game changer. Huge. Yeah. Now I was definitely playing at night as we were driving in the car. For sure. All the time. <laughs> I think that's so cool that you have these boxes. Now, this one does have these little discs on them that are, like, the stickers, basically, that were sealing the system. Yeah. A lot of people think these might have been sealed in, like, cellophane or some sort of cellar wrap or whatever it's called. They weren't. They were just sealed with stickers, usually based on the store themselves, might have sealed them. Maybe Nintendo put their own seals on some of their systems. So here you can see a little bit of damage, which is really common, especially after all these years. That is just going to have that kind of thing. And these do come with, like, all the instructions and everything in them. Of course they do. You guys would not throw anything away. Everything, which is so <laughs> cool. So your system's right there, yeah. and the backlit screen is not the best backlit screen, no. by the way, for the Game Boy SPs. There is 
a AGS 101. Let me just show you what I'm referring to if you're not familiar with it. A lot of people know about this already, but the AGS 001 is right up there. It is a backlit screen, it's just not quite the same quality as the AGS 101. Yeah. So if you're ever buying one of these and you want the best possible system, try and look for 101 right up there instead of AGS 001, and you'll get a slightly better experience, I think, with that kind of system. Yeah. Again, so now you got this one. <laughs> yeah, so let's just take a look at what we got in here and if it still has everything in it, because I haven't even opened these up yet when we got no, them from your mom. True. So I'm really curious what this has. We'll go through all of them actually. And again, I can guarantee you that we did not throw anything out. No, you're <laughs> exactly, you're, this is why we're together. <laughs> really good reason why you're together. All right, literally everything here. So first of all, there's multiple things in here. Or is it just folded up that way? You actually use the instruction I actually booklet. I use the instruction booklet. Like you yep. can see right here how this is yeah. peeking up. She actually used this because they folded it a little bit weird. <laughs> but obviously didn't fold it the right way to close it back up. You know what is crazy about this system, by the way? What is absolutely nuts to me about this system? There's no audio port for audio jack. Yeah. There was nowhere for you to put in headphones back then. That's so true. That is the weirdest thing I have ever seen, that there was nowhere. Like, I feel like they easily, they easily could have put it somewhere in the system inside. Yeah. There had to be a way. Because for a handheld system, I think it's so vitally important for you to be able to play and then listen to it yourself. And what I'm talking about is the previous system, the Game Boy Advance, the original one, it had an audio jack. So, like, what a weird decision yeah, from Nintendo. I, I didn't even realize that. I think back then they went for the compact clamshell design, which was brilliant. It actually fit in your pocket. Amazing, yeah. And it folds. Yeah, it fit everywhere. But no audio jack? Like, we have two connectors here. And that's just baffling to me. That's such yeah. a weird decision. I don't think the AGS-101 has it either. So you have the instruction booklet just like that you actually used. Then you have tons of other things in here. You have two of these, so I wonder if... One's just French, one's English. That's it. It's the same thing. It's register your system. And is there anything else as part of this insert? Nintendo of Canada. Cool, and you could like mail this away and obviously you didn't use that. So that's neat that you got both of those, the French and the English. Then you have a Game Boy SP mode de templo. So I guess it's just the same instruction booklet in the other language. And a precautionary booklet, <laughs> so not the instructions, but a little bit different there. And then you even have the Get the Power, Nintendo Power. I just finished my full set of Nintendo Powers, by the way. I do have a video up about finishing that whole set, which was so cool. Love Mario Sunshine Metroid, two of them right there. Subscribe and receive a free offer on the back. Strategies with Power. So cool to have all the inserts in such good condition. I really appreciate you. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Just being able to like have everything. So with the Game Boy S with the Game Boy Advance SP that you got right here. Yeah. Now, do you remember getting a game with it? Or was that just like what you got? Again, I think I got a game, and of course, as a result, like, again, my brother's birthday is around the same time as mine, and Christmas obviously falls on the same day, so we both got a game. Uh I received Donkey Kong Country. Now, why did you get Donkey Kong Country? Because it's like a very specific game for a reason. Yeah, so my my friends had an SNES and they had Donkey Kong Country there and whenever we went over we played on it. I had lots of fun with it. I really liked it. I think I was pretty good at it. And so this was like a natural choice for my parents to pick as the next game for me for a Game Boy Advance. I think it was very brilliant of them to give you this. So. Yeah. When I first started playing through this again, I played it as a kid with friends, but when we started playing through this, maybe for like some of our marathons to raise money for charity, I could not believe how good you were at this game. Yeah, like, I felt like shocked. a complete noob. Yeah. And you knew everything almost. Everything. Where things I, were, and you're just like, wait, where you, how did you remember that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, how do you know anything about this game? How do you know anything? And I was just shocked for a while, and I think it actually took you a little bit to reveal like, oh, I had it on the handheld. Yeah. And it's basically the same game yeah or close enough to being the exact same game it's just a port over so the original game released in 1994 and this one released in 2003 so it was almost 10 years that it then went handheld beautiful looking game by the way oh, made by awesome. rare yeah unreal but you love that whole trilogy so you got this one yeah what did your brother get so my brother got f-zero Maximum Velocity, one of the series that Nintendo has forgotten about, mm -hmm. except we were just playing Mario Kart 8 the other day. Oh yeah, and they had an F-Zero track, and we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> they have, so I, random. I think they have 
I mean, they might have two F-Zero tracks in that game. Maybe it's not just one. I can't remember. There's so much DLC in Mario Kart 8. What a fantastic Mario Kart game, by the way. But Nintendo hasn't released one of these games yeah. in a really long time. Ridiculously long time. There was nothing about this on the Switch, nothing about it on the Wii U. I don't think there was a game for it on the Wii. So the last F-Zero game is all the way back to the GameCube, GX. And here we have Maximum Velocity, which I honestly haven't played that much of, but I hear it's a fantastic entry in the series. This one was released in 2001. 20-year anniversary of this game. Crazy. I wonder what day it came out. I, yeah, I honestly don't remember. And, and even like my recounting of the dates of like when we got everything is foggy. So I may be wrong in what order we got things, but I think, again, because my brother and I have a birthday around the same time that it kind of like followed like that. <laughs> now, did you play this one a lot or did you play uh, Donkey Kong all the time? I played it a bit. I did. My brother obviously played it way more, but I did play it and I did enjoy it. That's awesome that you guys each like, I don't know, just getting complete in box games like this is so cool. What was that next game that you got for handheld? Well, I, again, was a very big fan of Donkey Kong Country. And so I'm pretty sure I bought at some point Donkey Kong Country 2. This is so cool, because to me, this is the best one in the trilogy. Yeah, it, it was awesome. Honestly, it was super hard. And, like, Dixie's is great and amazing, but, oh my gosh, this game was so hard. If you've ever played, and you've played, like, the lava level where you're, like, jumping from hook to hook, yeah, literally right there, like, it is so hard. <laughs> this is the one with the spider, um... Yeah, this, you, yeah, I think this is the one with the spider. It's not in Donkey Kong 1 with the spider. I'm pretty sure it's in this one. And there is actually the third Donkey Kong Country, I believe. Yeah, I never got that one. I, I think I just was too old at that point. And, too old for Nintendo. <laughs> and just, like, had other interests. <laughs> yeah, you're never too old to have a good time and play some games. But I think this is the best one because I think I the, two, <laughs> the two protagonists in this one is the best. Now, what really gets me about this one is the play on words with the title. It's actually called Diddy's Kong Quest. So, like, Diddy's sure. Conquest. Like, Conquest, the word, obviously, but yeah. it's Diddy's Conquest. And I always say it wrong. I'm not sure why I always pronounce it wrong, but the title's nowhere on here. It just says Donkey Kong Country 2. Yeah. Which is kind of strange to me, because the original game was just the original. The third one's Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, which is also confusing because Double to me should have been the second game, but it's the third game, which is just kind of confusing. Anyways, the best two protagonists in the Donkey Kong series, Very I think. agile players, for sure. Because Donkey Kong was just too much of a beast. I mean, he was strong, so he, he could strong, defeat some enemies. I definitely appreciated him when you were taking, like, a, a clump down. And what's hilarious is, like, the game, the second game, is called Donkey Kong Country, but Donkey Kong is, like, taken... And you don't play as Donkey Kong. Yeah, it's so weird. You only play as Diddy and Dixie, which is cool to introduce a new character. And you know what? Maybe everyone complained about like the play style of Donkey Kong. And maybe that's why they eventually replaced him. I'm really curious to ask Nintendo that's maybe. That's probably why, I'm sure. I wonder. Because Diddy was great. And Dixie is fantastic at the way they... And the hair too. And the hair flying, for sure. The hair flying helps out a lot in that game. Yeah. Were there any other handheld games that you had that maybe you got like cartridge only or anything else like that? Um... I honestly don't remember. We definitely got more games than we have here. We definitely had the Star Wars pod racing game. Right. Your brother still has that yeah, one. That's he has right. That for sure. Um, and yeah, that one had like a rumble feature, and so you had to put a battery in, and then it would rumble. It was, it was awesome because we're pretty big Star Wars fans. Um, that's the only one I remember. And then I had like you the, the bag for this. Oh yeah, you're very. Welcome. She has the bag <laughs> for this. And then uh, I think other than that, I just got like like a pets game of some sort, like dogs or cats, because I was into pets and wasn't able to have them because I'm allergic. Well, mm, we have pets someone, now yes. because you're on medication As, to... Well, I'm an adult, so now, now I can make my own decisions. Yeah, and combat <laughs> that entirely. So she literally has the baggie that this stuff came from. Hungry! That's so weird. Great gaming information doesn't come in a can. A subscription to Nintendo Power is all you need. <laughs> Subscribe. That's so funny. Yoshi's story on that cover... And on the back, so you're supposed to mail this in. You didn't mail it in. I did not. I'm you so sorry. You didn't mail it in, so you didn't so grow up sorry. on Nintendo Power. I did not. But you grew up keeping all of the baggies, keeping everything, which is so cool. I do want to open up the last one that I haven't taken a look at this yet. So I just think it was so cool, kind of like our lives were a little bit paralleled in that way. 
We were very fortunate enough to be able to like get handheld systems. Again, I was on the Game sure. Gear and you were quite, on this one. Quite privileged, for sure. Yeah, 100%. No question about that. However, I was on the... Like, I saved up my own birthday. It's still sealed on this side. Look at that. So, this side's opened with a sticker that you guys cut through and removed pretty well. Just a little bit of damage. But anyways, I bought my N64 with my own saved up birthday money from a year or two, basically, to afford it. Yeah. And then the GameCube, I think my parents actually did give me the GameCube. I'm trying to remember. I just think it's so nuts that you had the boxes <laughs> and we've been together For 14, like 14 years. years. Like, we've been together yeah. since the end of high school, essentially. Yeah. The summer of the end of high school. All three instructions here, still. Three of them in Canada. Ridiculous. Then you have two of these again. Register for a chance to win a Game Boy Advance game pack. And Gosh, you didn't register? I can't believe we didn't register. I can't register. believe... You, all you then had to you do is fill it out. you wouldn't have all the inserts. Then I would, they wouldn't be complete. You're right. I'm yeah. really happy you, you didn't. Out, right? But I'm also like, what? You didn't even send these away. Subscribe and receive a free issue of Nintendo Power Advance specifically. Oh, one of our favorite games, Paper oh, Mario. Paper Mario. Not the Thousand Year Door, that's the original one. The Thousand Year Door is, is definitely arguably pop. better. Yeah. But I like the one on the N64 better overall for me personally. So I think this was really cool. I'm just so baffled that it took 14 <laughs> and a half years. Yep. <laughs> for your family and to finally get these, considering they're in your house and they were in they're your in den. House, they're sitting there waiting. That's insane to get Falling these. To us. And like, to be honest, if I were to put a price on these, especially considering they come with all the inserts and everything for these, if you were to buy these on eBay, you're probably looking at spending a minimum of $50 for, I think, the Game Boy Color Box. So the Game Boy Color Box with all the inserts, probably at least 50, 60 US dollars to get just the box. Not even with the system, just the cardboard box. I'm trying to get all the Game Boy Colors, by the way. I have quite a few of them now. I think I'm after Dandelion next. There's Teal, there's Kiwi, there's... Is what's the Kiwi? red one? Berry? Berry. Yeah, and then I want to get Dandelion, which will be the yellow one. I think this one, though, is a lot less expensive for the box. This is probably like $25 to $30, but it's in such good condition. It even has this sticker from the store still on it, which set off alarms, yeah, I think, when you I don't leave. Know how it left. I have no idea. <laughs> well, they scan it out. Right. Yeah, they scan it out. So that one's probably like $30, maybe, in that condition, maybe a little bit more. And then this one's probably around the same. It does have some damage with that right there. I was just so excited to open it. You ruined it. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love how it has A Link to the Past on the back here with Four Swords and Metroid Fusion, two of the best games on the system never that you them. never got into. Nope. <laughs> I'm surprised with Zelda. What about Super Circuit Mario Kart? Never had that one either? I have it. Now I thought you, you did. That, I think we did. I thought you had that one too, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Hold on, let me grab it. Talk about that one, because you definitely played that one. I feel like I did, yeah. Like, a. Uh... I definitely, like, going into, we were playing, like, when we met, we were playing Mario Kart Double Dash, and I had definitely played a Mario Kart before that, and it was definitely this game that's right in front of you right yes, now. Yes, <laughs> I forgot to grab this one yeah. because it was on my Mario Kart right. wall. it was not in the same spot. Of all the Mario Kart games. But we definitely did play this. This one really does seem to me like a true sequel to the one on the Super Nintendo, which we have tried a little bit of as well. We've played together. And I think the graphics is obviously a lot better on the Game Boy Advance, this one was. and But Double Dash, you and I played that one forever. Forever, yeah. Double Dash was the the one where, that I think that's how we fell in love. One of the reasons, in our competitiveness, <laughs> playing that game. Such a good, such, I love that Mario Kart game. Such a good game. Mario Kart. But I for sure think you guys, you definitely had we this had, one too. That. I'm pretty sure that's my Because I remember this being... <laughs> I, I, for sure remember this being uh, yeah, we, we in the wooden box. Yeah, we definitely that you mentioned that. Yeah, let me see if I can just open this without damaging it too much. Okay, so there's the cart, obviously. The carts are in all the boxes for these. And let's just take a look at this. So, like, what is a true complete in box? I'm going to trust you here because Again, you guys didn't throw out anything. We do not throw things out. Like, the little package of plastic is still there. This was for the game, by the way. <laughs> the game goes in this little baggie. They threw out... And I, you're amazing. <laughs> Did not throw things out. Amazing. And I don't know why. <laughs> well, I know why. <laughs> you knew. Now, what I'm really upset about is the back of this. Oh. Yeah, I assume it was packaged like that. Yeah, well, I mean, packaged like that for the last little while. Game Boy Advance little insert here again. The Super Circuits. Yeah, you've got everything. 
This is complete. We just I just need to replace this probably with something that's better. But that is insane how you just kept all of these yeah. and had them for so long. <laughs> so just to be clear, I did have the boxes for the games that you did give me, I think, when I started the channel almost essentially. Yeah. Maybe like 10 years ago, yeah. I, th I would say you've had those for sure. <laughs> but the three boxes right here that you're seeing, which I would put a total value at at least 100 US dollars, just sitting in your parents' house. Yeah. For the longest time. <laughs> Definitely take a little search around your parents' house and it's cool what you might find. I think one of my collecting tips from Collecting Tips 101, when I made 101 videos <laughs> seven years ago, I really need to redo that series probably. I think I should definitely do that series. I've been talking about that for a little while. Anyways, one of my tips was to ask your family and friends, do you have any Nintendo games or PlayStation games or Xbox games or whatever you're interested in? And the whole time these were under our noses. Yeah. It paid off. They came out eventually. I'm still really curious <laughs> if your family has that blue Wii that is like untouched Correct. somewhere buried in their house. Correct. More on that later because they might literally have the blue Wii factory sealed, brand new, untouched. Untouched. Yeah. In their house somewhere. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure my parents got it as like a shopper's like points reduction. Right, that's where they got it. Okay, more on that later, more on that yeah. later. I'll have to mow their lawn or something like that and maybe earn it in some way this summer. Yeah, it's probably an earned thing. <laughs> Definitely. So I'm so happy to have these. Great story. Really wanted to share that with you guys. I really appreciate it, Ivory. And your mom, a huge thank yeah, for... thank you, Mom, for finding these. <laughs> mom, Nintendo mom's coming through. <laughs> Nintendo gifts when you're a kid, and she's still coming through when you're an adult. Yeah. Like, Very 20 thankful. years later. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. That's amazing. Yeah. If you guys want to share any of your own stories of what handheld system did you grow up on, and have you ever had any luck or asking your family or friends, do you have any Nintendo games that I could buy, or maybe do some chores and get them off you or anything like that? I'd love to hear from that as well. Thanks, Ivory. I really appreciate you joining me for this video and for that story. That was a lot of fun. Thanks for being here for that. <laughs> that was wonderful. Oh, no, no problem. I'm glad to have been able to contribute. And a really big thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thanks for being so supportive for so long. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. I try and post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays around 10 a.m. usually. Go collect them all. Keep smiling while gaming. You guys are awesome. Bye.